know, anecdotally, I just noticed that in some of these neighborhoods, these people aren't exactly driving their cars to the store. They're walking from the neighborhoods to buy groceries and back. And I'm not so sure how practical these paper bags are going to be in that situation. Is it a plan or a feature anywhere to provide those kinds of folks with the, cloth, the more permanent bags, the cloth canvas bags? Is that is that programmatically uh, in place in some places? It, it is. Um, they're not required to, though. Retailers would not be required to give out a reusable bag, but it is an option. So they could give out paper or reusable um, at no charge to WIC or other um, food program recipients. Um, I think that, again, it's you know, it kind of depends on the store, but I think most stores see the uh, significance in providing a reusable bag as opposed to paper bags over and over again. Um, and I think, quite frankly, you know, I mean, I think our stores like to see the paper, you know, they don't want to have a whole lot of paper bags on hand either. So I think the more they promote reusable bag use, the better. I mean, I think our industry has really been on the forefront of promoting reusable bag use, more so than I think a lot of other um, industries. I guess my question was more to, is there actually a program in place, or is this just kind of an idea that's out there to, to go forward with that, well, for those types of uh, citizens? Yeah, I haven't heard of a, I mean, there's obviously programs in place, right? So there's um, different promotional periods that you could give away reusable bags, and it could be for, you know, WIC recipients, or other food program recipients, or it could be surrounding Earth Day, or it could be, I mean, there could be a number of different reasons why you would give out a reusable bag for free. Um, but in terms of all, uh, what I've seen in ordinance language and other jurisdictions is that um, the charge is exempt for either a paper bag or a reusable bag for WIC recipients. That's the language. And it's up to the store to decide which one question might really be one of Ms. Kang and maybe to uh, one of the present grocers or retailers. And that is, uh, in, the, in a retail model, oftentimes they do not encourage you to bring in bags or backpacks. In fact, you have to check them at the counter. So when we go to another model where we are no longer uh, allowing people to do that, uh, or, or encouraging people to bring in a reusable bag, some of the feedback I've gotten from some of the uh, smaller retailers and merchants is that they have uh, issues with security and shoplifting. Um, is that something, I don't know which one of you would, would maybe like to address that, if that's been uh, a subject of conversation so far? I can speak for grocery stores, and um, we have not seen that at all. Um, I haven't heard actually from any one of my membership that um, store theft has increased um, you know, simultaneously with the passage of any of these ordinances. Um, I can't speak for, you know, a small boutique shop that's not selling grocery items. Um, but from CGA's perspective, we have not seen that to be the case. Well, I know that there was some comment when the, when the downtown organization, for example, has the Shop Street program to provide canvas bags, Shop Street Santa Barbara's promotion. And one of the unanticipated uh, reactions from some of the merchants, and I don't know what uh, how it's how it based itself in results was that, well, you know, you walk in with a bag, I don't know if you brought that item in, brought it out, or if you have to load up your bag with small items to take to checkout, are you in the process of buying something or taking it home? So, Ms. King, have you uh, had any conversations about that so far in terms of the overall plans for elimination of all these uh, handled bags? No, Council Member Rosa, no, I have not. Um, a great many of these ordinances have just gone into effect within the past year, so there isn't a lot of data um, surrounding um, topics like this. But um, at Where's Your Bag, we like to give away Chico bags, which tuck into your purse and they're, they're foldable into a little ball. So um, we promote those types of bags, which makes it less obvious that you're carrying a bag with you when you go into a store. But no, I haven't heard anything about increased stuff. Thank you. I want to be clear something Mr. Hutchins says about the Macy's and Nordstrom's or whatever. So you go in there, you go shopping, you buy your clothes or shoes or whatever. Um, you didn't bring a reusable bag. You don't usually think about that per se, but it, the, the paper bags would still be available for 10 cents, pretty much, if that's what the Yes, yeah, Mount Air, yes, that's correct. And um, uh, 
you know, they can still be charging 10 cents for them, which I imagine they cost a lot more than that, but yeah, they can still provide that. Okay. Mr. Now? Yes, I just want, and I want to be sure I understood this because I was listening very carefully to that piece of it. Um, so the idea is that there's nothing here that would inhibit somebody from making an impulse purchase or adding on to what they may have already anticipated or like me, they only brought one of their 50 bags that's in the car into the place and I've got too much, it's cheap but not a big deal, it doesn't hold me back from buying stuff. It doesn't seem to. It seems to be, and some of this, again, some of this, as um, Kathy stated, it's, um, stuff has only been in, you know, implemented for a year, so it's, it's, a, it's a little hard to um, come up with tried and true data. Um, and some of this is based off the Master Environmental Assessment Study that was done by Green City of California. And what it said was 10 cents seems to be the tipping point that really does encourage, it seems to be the floor, that encourages <coughs> reusable bag use. Um, but yet, if a customer just forgot or makes an unplanned purchase, it, it, you know, they can handle paying the dime. Um, especially since that's not every trip. I mean, oftentimes, you know, this might happen once a week or once every other week, depending how often you shop. Um, that, that's what we are seeing. Very good. That, I just want to make sure I got that principle. I see Mr. Reddy is here, um, also um, from Beacon. I know Mr. Kamadi was planning on coming. Um, and is, is Mr. Uh, Reddy, are you going to be presenting for um, Beacon today? Uh, okay. Uh, in just a moment, uh, we have a uh, letter that was distributed, and then maybe you can cover that. A uh, question for our staff. Uh, Mr. Ford is here. Maybe we could just um, have him take a moment with us. Uh, in preparing our request today, um, in the statement of reasons why it's appropriate for and within our jurisdiction of the council to consider the subject matter and take the requested action, um, we wrote that it's in the city's interest to reduce waste, uh, promote the use of reusable shopping bags, and ensure our creeks, beaches, and ocean are kept clean and free of ambient waste such as single-use plastic bags, and um, that it was consistent with existing policies. And you've been working on this for some time uh, from the city's perspective or similar kinds of things. So can you just reflect a little bit on where we are right now with our, our, our goals of reducing this kind of waste and how that relates to what we're discussing today? Uh, sure. Um, Madam Mayor, Council Member House, I'll just briefly address each of those. Um, from a waste management standpoint, you know, as we've said to this body before, plastic bags really make up a very small percentage of the city's waste stream. You know, from our research, based on waste composition studies that we've done in the past, we're confident that most of them, that the overwhelming majority, are ending up either recycled at the store through bills like AB 2449, or frankly, they're buried in the landfill. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to, I'm sorry, the students who are here have to go, but I want to thank them for being here. And uh, you came in and out, and so, adios. But thank you for coming, and your presence was definitely noted. I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Ford. I didn't know they were leaving. So in terms of uh, disposal, we're, we're pretty confident that they're either, you know, some are recycled, although the statewide rate is not real high. But we believe that the bulk majority, based on our waste composition studies, and just what we know, what is buried to the landfill, they're being buried and disposed. Um, you know, as we mentioned in July of last year, when we were last here in front of council, we also arranged through the county staff, we jointly approached Gold Coast Recycling, our recycler in Ventura, and they're now accepting plastic bags for recycling uh, in all the blue containers, the carts, cans, and dumpsters. So that's another outlet for work. We're capturing. I don't know if you've seen in the past month or two, we have had a joint uh, public outreach campaign getting that message out with the county, so that's getting out. In terms of a, a litter component, that was another issue that we, have, uh, that we looked at. Um, you know, it's, the data's kind of inconclusive. Um, we see, um, you know, there's some litter, you know, we've given you statistics uh, and um, Kathy and Penny certainly gave that today that we do find them, you know, they're there. But the source is, and, and how much does the city contribute to the problem, either uh, in the marine environment, you know, we have surveyed the Harbor Patrol, the waterfront, um, and other city agencies and said, how often do you find plastic bags? Yeah, anecdotally, we hear from surfers, they find them occasionally. 
when we talk to other city staff, either parks or waterfront, they're really not seeing them all that often. Um, those that are in the marine environment, it's inconclusive what percentage of those actually originated and came from the city of Santa Barbara. And so um, we've also given you a little bit of uh, information. We surveyed the Creeks Department uh, Division as well. Uh, rather than answer for that, Mr. Cameron Benson's here, and I would like to probably defer to him to, to more talk about how often they see them. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Benson, if you can ask a question. Of Mr. Ford? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And then Mr. Benson. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ford, when did the when did Gold Coast start recycling plastic bags? Uh, Madam Mayor, Councilmember Francisco, I'll have to get the exact date, um, but it was last year at some point. Okay. And I don't know if there's a if there's a rule of thumb about this sort of thing, but in general, how long does it take for the public to become aware of some new thing that can be recycled and start actually taking advantage of that in significant numbers? It's a function of how much messaging we do to the public. I mean, really, if we were to blanket the airwaves and all print media, you know, nonstop, it would probably be fairly easy to cover a city the size of Santa Barbara. Um, really, it's a function of, of awareness, I believe. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Benson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, as far as um, uh, the volume of plastic bags we find, I think it's I think it's a fair statement to say that plastic bags are in the top 10 types of trash that we find. We do keep track of different different kinds of things that we remove from the creek. We remove some, anywhere between 40 and 50 tons of litter from the creek every year, uh, from, the, from the creeks in the city every year. And, but plastic bags aren't separated in that from other trash. And so, um, we, we have done some analysis of how often we find trash and send a contractor out to a given location. We send, send a contractor out to pick up trash at over a thousand different sites throughout the year. 93% of them we find trash. And I think a conservative estimate would be in at least a third of those we find plastic bags. Um, and I can say I, I've done many, many uh, creek cleanups and been involved with many, many beach cleanups. On the creek cleanups, I don't think I've, I've been out on a single one where I haven't found a plastic bag. Um, beach cleanups can be different because the bags blow. So when they get out on the when they get out on the beach, they're blowing around instead of on the creek. They tend to get snagged on sticks or pipes or rocks or something like that and tend to stay put. Um, thank you, Ms. Maria. But did you put that all your questions? No, I, I, I actually have a question. I, I know that after all these questions, Mr. Red, Red, Red will want to speak. Um, uh, Mr. Benson, the, you, you've been dealing with the creek uh, habitat environment for some time, and the reason, part of the reason why we have um, had Measure B was that what goes into the creek ends up in the ocean. And I know we've had a lot of folks talking. I'm sure there's some young people and others here that want to talk to us about that. But the effect of the uh, what we call in our report, our, our request here today, ambient waste getting into the ocean, could you just address that for a moment so that we have a, we, are, we recognize we're capturing a lot of this and gets into the landfill, which isn't all that great, but gets into the landfill as opposed to just blowing around. But when it gets into a creek, gets into the ocean, what's the effect? Where are we there? Uh, well, I think, the, I think the council has heard a lot of testimony in, in past hearings about uh, scientific studies and impacts on wildlife and so forth from from plastic and other debris getting into the into the marine environment, uh, what's clear is we, you know, we do have uh, we do have a lot of trash and a lot of litter getting onto the creeks, and we have rain events. All of that gets out into the ocean. Uh, every, that is to say, everything that we can't pick up before the rain comes. And the, you know, as I mentioned, we do have we do have contractors paid for by Measure B funds that are going in and doing additional cleanup. Uh, in the creeks, and this is in addition to street sweeping and other types of trash cleaning up around the city. Uh, we spend about $100,000 a year, and like I said, remove somewhere around 50 tons of garbage a year out of the creeks. We do try to we do try to do that uh, at the beginning of the rainy season. We, we do a, a complete clean.
clean out so that so that we can get what's built up over the over the dry months before we have our first flush come through and send it out to the ocean. Thank you, Ms. Murillo, and then Mr. Hodgkins, and then I know we want to hear from you. I have a question. I think it's from Mr. Moore um, about styrofoam. I'm glad Mr. Hodgkins brought it up. Um, well, how does that break down in the ocean, or do you know how much that's recycled? Is it recyclable? And are there um, jurisdictions that have banned uh, styrofoam? Santa Maria comes from Rio. There are jurisdictions that have banned styrofoam. I don't have those numbers readily available today. I can certainly bring them back. Um, I'd like to actually bring that information back to you in another venue on specifics of you know, its life cycle. Um, but I can tell you there have been some jurisdictions that have adopted an ordinance to ban it. Because it's made of polystyrene, and isn't that part of what's in a plastic bag? I'm, I'm not sure how much of a science head you have, but... Uh, polystyrene is actually, it, 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 it is not what is in plastic bags. Um, there are two different types of plastic. Um, I'd be glad to bring you research on that. Staff had given a presentation to Council some years back about the polystyrene issue, uh, and we were directed to to hold off uh, for a number of reasons until, you know, for example, until we had a composting program in place to provide uh, sufficient alternatives. But staff that really has not explored that issue since we were put on hold. Well, I don't want to complicate the matter then. Thank you. Mr. Hodgkins? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Actually, I think polystyrene is at 90% air. That's why it's so light. You know, when you, so it doesn't mean it doesn't have other stuff in it, obviously. But um, you mentioned sort of the top 10, and so did Ms. King. So I'm wondering what else is on the top 10 chart for trash? Madam Mayor, Councilmember Hotchkiss, we also find um, plastic bottles, uh, cans, uh, cigarette butts, styrofoam, um, pla uh, pl other hard plastic utensils and things from takeout food, uh, bottles. Sort of the stuff of 21st century life. It's just been, and do you think some of that, because I remember in Mr. Ford's report before, that uh, both the parks and beaches and the waterfront, we found, I guess I would say minimal, and that's sort of been my experience, but in the creeks, there was a fair amount of, I think there were like 24 plastic bags of one cleanup you did, and it just made me wonder, could that be because we have transients living in some of those creek beds? Do you know if that's the case or not? Well, we do have transients living in, in those creek beds, and we are uh, cleaning up those areas as well. The, um, but some of the things, you know, again, if, with the waterfront, you've got you've got large open spaces, so if you have a lightweight trash item, it's going to it's going to blow out of that area pretty quickly. Uh, the Creeks Division does uh, clean right along the shoreline of the beach. Uh, we're out there once a week and picking up trash. We pick up about 500 pounds of trash every week. Yeah, Mike. Uh, also, I don't know if you've seen this, but I've seen seagulls sorting trash. You know, they pull stuff out, they go look at our hot dogs or something, they get a hot dog. And actually, I'm excited, I know, I'm supposed to be hungry, right? I actually saw it when I said, you know, it was sort of ferocious, and I charged him, and he didn't, wasn't going anywhere, so then I went after him again, and he finally disappeared. And I went in and sat in my car, I was making a phone call, I got bombed by the seagull. I had to go to the car wash, I'm dead serious, they're pretty smart, anyway, I had to tell you that. <laughs> Well, Thank I, you for I, that. <laughs> <laughs> You're right about the, about the birds and the trash cans. I think the city uh, does make an effort to try to keep lids or covers on the trash cans so that you don't have birds distributing that. So it's not, uh, and one of the things when you have the really lightweight stuff, the, the styrofoam, the plastic bags, that's, I saw the term unintentional litter. Right. I think, I think that's, that's not all of what we get. Some of it's intentional for sure, but there, there is a lot that just gets blown out or blows right. out, out the window of the car yeah, or the of a truck. You collect know. it, put it away, psh, gets blown out. I think you're right. Thanks a lot. Mr. Reddy, would you mind coming up and um, just, uh, Mr. House, before you came in, explained the process at Beacon at previous board meetings, but just sort of explain what Beacon's able to do and what directions had so far.